All right, now continuing our uh, discussions about the different ways that people sing. Uh, we did the, the, uh, the pre-cough, then we did the hiccup, and now I'm going to try to do what I call mini puffs. And mini puffs uh, were, were the ones that were, were, were so used by uh, Luisa Tetrazzini. And uh, I got this from people who demonstrated it for me way back in, you know, 1958, 59. There were a lot of people around who, had, uh, who actually had, uh, there were choristers who had sung with her in the, in the chorus. There were, there were coaches that were still, you know, pianists that were still, that still knew her. There were people in the Metropolitan Opera Club who knew her. And the one thing she did, apparently, was the mini puffs. Now, uh, we'll have to, I'll do them the way they showed me what she did, but I don't see anything puffing about it. She basically uh, took them inward. And if I do uh, what she, what I was told she did, and I was talking about some very reliable people, some very uh, major coaches and uh, uh, people that had been soloists all during the time, um, a lot of them had sung small parts with her, and uh, but she was apparently in her dressing room doing this particular vocalist. So I thought we would at least uh, we discuss it a little bit. And this is the way they're done. You have to listen because they're not loud. <laughs> See what I'm doing? I'm just sucking in very steadily. I'm doing a constant sort of a sucking in, and. Uh, uh, I'm interrupting them as I go along and go. <laughs> and that was apparently what she did all the time, standing around in the wings, standing around backstage, and people would be standing next to her and they'd hear this. <laughs> so if I sing that way, what is it? How does it place my voice now? That's the other question. So if I go. The question is, does it put my voice in the proper resonance if I do it? Apparently it worked for her, and I go, she's the one that Caruso and... Uh, Toscanini thought had the best uh, female voice that they ever heard. It's interesting because when she made it, when Bigger Nielsen made her debut uh, at the Metropolitan Opera as Isolde, the old man at the Metropolitan Opera Club, where we used to go and sing for them, because I was in the school and we sang for them uh, concerts and duets and trios and the artists and so what. And then we talk about great singers. And one of the things they talked about a lot after Nielsen's debut is that they could not understand why she was singing uh, Isoldo. Why didn't she make her debut as, as, uh, as Lucia di Lammermoor? Because she sounded just like Tetrazzini. <laughs> now, those of you who know Bigger Nielsen's voice, uh, well, maybe if you take that voice and put it in, in Lucia di Lammermoor, then maybe we would think it was the greatest voice we ever heard, too. <laughs> so we... We don't really know. There's a lot of, I think this and I think that. Everybody wants to have their opinion, so why not? But let's see if we can do <laughs> on all the vowels. If I go, la, 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 la. People that tried to do this considered it extremely difficult from the physical execution's point of view. In other words, it is very strenuous. It's one of the most strenuous uh, ways to sing. It's somewhat like Breath of Fire, which is also a very strenuous way if you want to, if you want to, uh, use, we'll do it later, but if you want to sing with it, it's, it, it can be exhausting. Now, I never tried to sing a performance with uh, so-called mini puffs, but I certainly did with Breath of Fire. And if these are, uh, if these are strenuous, maybe you, you do gain uh, some sound and something because of the way it works. It gets a very, very, uh, let's see, if I do, la, 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 la,
la la la. I'll do a little bit of uh, cavalry because I'm going to do it later with the rest of the fire. But the void of it, the void of it, the Mahamasan, the Mama. That's trying to do Luisa Tetrasini's mini bus. If I do that, <laughs> it really does nail my voice down to my lower back. And of course, I get that long air column. And the longer and bigger the air column, uh, you know, that was what Matt Carroll taught me. He said, the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. Well, the longer the air column, maybe the bigger the sound too. Somebody said, what's the difference between a trumpet and a trombone, or a clarinet and a saxophone, or, or an alto sax and a tenor sax? It's always the length of the air column. Um, so we, when we get bigger sounds, we need those longer, bigger air columns. Now, if, you're, uh, um, if, you, have a, if you really have a, a great big natural voice, big vocal cords and so forth and so on, then you do need... Uh, to find out a way to sing down in the body and extend the length or the, either the size of your drums or the length of your air column. This one is a <laughs> sort of everything at once. It opens up this way down lower and down in the lower back, which is what Caruso described in his vocal technique in his book. The breath goes down the back and the lower back opens up and also goes out. So it goes down and out. And Tetrasini is doing that. The, the, the mini puffs is one way to achieve that. So I'm going. <laughs> There's something very, very muscular about the way of singing. As long as you've got the muscle strength and you can pull and keep keep going <laughs> while you're singing. You know, it goes up, the voice gets in the resonance and it sounds good and all that, especially the few times I ever tried it in theater, uh, people always commented on how powerful and big my voice was. But to be able to do that all the time, I don't know. I think I should have started when I was younger, maybe like six months old or something. I don't know when I should have started trying to develop the strength to do that. Lord, you know. So... Uh, if I'm singing along and I'm, I've got to sing something like, I don't know why you name it, I mean, really, I can sing, I usually do a little excerpt of, of some of the operas like that. Uh, but if I do something like, uh, uh, let's say I do Valkyr and I do a mini puss, I go, Ein schwer verschieß mir der Vater, ich fände es in höchster Not. Waffen aus vielischen feindes Haus, seine Rache fand Ratte hier. Ein Weib sah ich, wann ich und hier, entzückend bangen, entzückt mein Herz. The, the whole idea is you keep it going with, let's just call it muscular power, uh, to be able to do this. For a long time, almost guarantees your voice is going to go in the mask. So we're going to get up there in that in the true mask up here where they belong. Uh, in your head, the head's going to ring like crazy. Uh, it it doesn't doesn't go in my nose at all. <laughs> la 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 la. So when I close my nose, it has no effect on the tone. You know what Caruso said: never sing into the nasal cavity. Well, the nasal cavity is not just here; it's all the way across. It's that whole area. And he said, never sing there. Never sing there. Uh, you find out after you've been singing a lot of performances in big theaters over big orchestras, you begin to realize, wait a minute, one carries better than the other. One projects better. And any kind of nasality seems to kill projection. Everybody thinks they're going to penetrate by going, ha, they're going to penetrate through that curtain sound of, uh, of the orchestra. And just the opposite is true. It, when you get it in your nose, the sound sort of blends in with all the other instruments. So it would be better if we could uh, do the mini puffs and get strong enough to do them all the time. Why not, right? Right? 
So it's interesting to try to do some of these saying, It makes my diction uh, very clear. Uh, I'm going a ah, e i o u, and and uh, really people really can't understand your what you're saying when you sing that way. I go. I'm gonna get out of town. I'll see you later tomorrow. Do you want to make a date for next week? And you can understand every word I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, I think that demonstrates the point. The point is, it's only one basic exercise. Uh, you can read in Chapter Sini's book what she did. She said, the first, the first drop of air goes in the lower rear quadrant of the lungs. Then you fill up the lungs from the bottom to the top. Then you take the air column, which is anchored down way down in the, in the bottom, the, the, uh, way down the lower quadrant of the lungs, and you lean this air column over against your sternum, right? And she said it's like a propping a ladder against the wall. So now I've got my lean there, and now I do mini puffs. <laughs> So it's a, it's a very, very bright, clear kind of sound. Um, if I do, uh, you know, uh, something like uh, Faust. Anyway, you get the point. I'm getting so old, I'll be 85 years old tomorrow. <laughs> so March 15th, that's my birthday. So um, I'm getting too old to remember anything anymore. It's amazing. Who is this guy in the picture here? I don't recognize him. I've forgotten who he is. <laughs> Okay, I hope that'll at least make you curious to, uh, to see what it's like to go. <laughs> okay, bye.